Follow your elbows, curving through space. Having recently gone through my uncle's dress patterns, John Curry involved in Ross Weymouth, who had been dress designers from the 1950s to 1990s, dressing clients from different establishments, but mainly from the Nicholas Building on the corner of Swanston Street and Flinders Lane in Melbourne. That's where I worked for them as a teenager, mainly hand beating and sewing, had many fond memories and was very close to them. While going through these patterns, many of them had been repaired over the years with layers of sticky tape adding to their character as the layers of life and the creativity that emerged from them. Going through their old patterns gave me a deeper response than I thought. I felt a strong feeling of sadness at first and then as I moved through and repaired them, I felt a satisfaction in doing this for them and their legacy. As I neatly laid them one by one in a brand new archival box that I purchased for them to live in, I felt a sense of achievement in looking after this history. While I repaired and connected with these patterns working intersubjectively with them, it made me think of the many clients these patterns had been used for to create beautiful gowns for their special occasions. Then thinking a bit deeper, I remember the requests these clients would make, like, I'd like a style or colour to make me look slimmer, being one of the main ones. Or they would want the sleeves to cover their arms that they felt weren't firm enough to show, or skirts to fall below the knee so not to show their wobbly knees. Thinking about the way these women would respond and feel about their bodies started to make me think about body image and how so many women don't feel happy enough with their bodies and want to hide certain areas of their bodies, worried about being judged by society. This is what inspired me with the art installation that I created for International Women's Day I thought it was relevant as most women can respond to these thoughts at some stage in their lives. Also having lived and felt through my journey with alopecia over the last three years and having lost all my body hair, I felt I resonated and connected with the subject of appearance and body image on a deeper level as I did back when I was bedding those beautiful gowns. As a society, I feel we need to give ourselves slack. We are the same person with the same feelings, no matter what we look like. We shouldn't waste our precious time fighting the demons of body image and the way society and the media brainwash us to feel. It is basic human instinct to want to be accepted. It should not be judged on how a person looks, whether we have hair or not, big bums, thin lips, overweight or too skinny. If we could learn to accept ourselves and others for who we are, to be thankful for what we have and the goodness of our souls, it would be a kinder and happier world. I'm inviting you into the round room and to think about those negative thoughts that may have found a place in your head. Write those thoughts onto a stone and leave the stone behind in the round room. When leaving the room, there is a lock with positive stones on the outside that are painted with love. This is my gift to you to remind you to love yourself no matter what. Leave a negative, take a positive. Hello, my name's Anne Peter Silva and I work in public programs here at the Griffith Regional Art Gallery. And um, I'm just really 
wanting to say just a couple of quick words about Kerry Weymouth's work here at Each for Equal. So I wanted to comment on the public reaction to her work, to Kerry's work. People just come in here and eyes open up. They go quiet. They usually have a very close look at things. They come into the, the magic round room. They spend a little bit of time, but then they want to come back. And that's what we love. So, you know, like to come back and experience the art that's here and the concepts about women's value of themselves and of each other and our need to really support each other.